All right, we are going to go through some updates we received on the 7702 change, the update in the life insurance industry, which everyone's been talking about and how it will benefit whole life insurance, how it will hurt whole life insurance, is IUL a better choice, all this good stuff. So we did receive some information. One carrier has actually updated their products, one of the major mutual companies, specifically with their Boley products, only because we're working on a Boley right now with someone. So we were able to obtain some insight and we're actually gonna show you some of that in this video and compare the old product with higher guarantees compared to the new product with lower guarantees, the rate that is, and see which one actually provides a greater net value. It'll be really interesting. So what we're gonna cover here is the primary question, does it impact my cash value? Does this new change impact cash value on a whole life insurance policy in a negative manner. Meaning, should I buy today when I have a contract at a 4% guarantee because it's not gonna be good anymore based off of the new guarantees, the new MEC laws, all of that good stuff. So before we just say yes or no, let's actually get some information. I would, to, to sum it up, I would not rush into a product right now because the change will not be as much as we are, have been led to believe. So, MEC limits, these will be impacted. We're gonna go through this in this video. Guaranteed rates will be adjusted. The guaranteed rate on a whole life insurance policy will be adjusted. We're gonna go through exactly what they will be adjusted to. Insurance expenses, those will change quite a bit as well. Guaranteed values. This will be the fun part that we're gonna go through thoroughly because there is a distinct difference between the guaranteed rate on a policy and the guaranteed value. The guaranteed value is your actual guaranteed cash value, and that represents our net internal rate of return. That's what I'm interested in. And we're gonna go through an example on that too. And then existing policies, we'll touch on this quickly right now. If I have a policy in force already at the 4% guarantee, if I bought it this year, Last year, before the update occurs, will that change? And the answer is no. I am locked in to the contract language that I purchased that policy in or, or on. I do have the opportunity to update it, or I should say I will likely have the opportunity, opportunity to update it if I choose to do so, but it will not automatically be pulled out from under me and changed to the new product. Same thing happened beginning of January 2020 with the recent mortality table update. Everyone had the opportunity to update their contracts to comply with the new mortality tables if they wanted to. So let's get into it here. We're going to go through a demonstration here of a 50 year old male. And what we've got here, 2017 CSO at 4% and then the same thing at 2%. So what this represents, the 2017 CSO represents the mortality tables that life insurance companies use and the minimum guaranteed interest rate they have to apply to their whole life products. So for a long time, since the 1980s, they've had that 4% minimum guarantee. This year, 2021, they're all changing now to comply with a minimum of 2%. The 2017 mortality tables, those are the same, same mortality rates. However, the minimum guarantee will change. The guaranteed rate will change here. Based on today's rules, because this update has not occurred yet with insurance companies, if I'm a 50-year-old male and I purchase a $2 million death benefit, a whole life policy with a $2 million death benefit, that will obtain me almost a clean $100,000 MEC limit. That means I have the ability to pay $100,000 per year into the product. We can customize it going back to the policy design, minimum premium at 10,000, term rider, PUAs at 90,000, maximum cash value. $2 million death benefit based off the new tables will not obtain the same MEC limit. Here's the main, a big change here. So with MEC limits specifically, that same $2 million may obtain me $150,000 to $180,000 in mech space. That means for a 50-year-old male, if he had $2 million, now he can pay up to $150,000 or $180,000 per year. Now, if a 50-year-old male approaches the situation and says, well, I don't need to pay in that much. I want the ability, Steve, to pay in 
$100,000 per year, say this is next year, once the change occurs, well, what, what would that mean? He wouldn't need $2 million. He might need $1.2 million, $1.3 million, whatever it comes out to. So we don't have this information yet, but this is looking like what it's going to look like, where it's going to fall. So the same amount of life insurance will obtain more mech space. So if I want a 100K mech limit, if I'm reverse engineering a policy and I say, I want the ability to put in 100K per year, I'm interested in maximum cash value, $10,000 base premium, minimum insurance expense, $1.2 million death benefit, lowering the insurance expenses. You'll see where I'm going with this. Guaranteed rate is and has been for a long time 4% new guaranteed rate will be 2 to 3.75%. Companies have the choice to, uh, or that range I should say, so they can actually select where they set the guaranteed rate on their products. Some companies may even select different guaranteed rates for different whole life products. But the guaranteed rate will range between 2 and 3.75%. Insurance expenses. So we've got our current expenses, which do differ from insurance company to insurance company. We're gonna look at an example very soon here on this point. This will, we will see a reduction of 40 to 50%. Where I'm going with this, MEC limits increased, insurance expenses decreased, guaranteed values. This is the important piece to look at. So naturally, <clears throat> if the guaranteed rate goes down on a product, what would my reaction or your reaction be in respect to the guaranteed values, the actual performance? Is it gonna perform at a weaker rate now? The instinct, the natural answer would be, yeah, it has to because the guaranteed rate went down. However, if my expenses reduce to a lesser degree, does it wash out? Could my guaranteed values be stronger? Here's the thing, net IRR, net growth on cash value, that's what I am interested in. And we're going to look at an example with a Boley product. And why I like that is, for the years of doing this, when you look at bank-owned life insurance, it is a different product than what we can get as an individual with a whole life insurance policy. However, with the major mutual carriers, have always seen consistencies. However, that bully leads, the retail products don't follow it in an identical sense, but it's very, very similar, and it always has been if a policy is designed properly. So, a lot of info here, but main thing is net IRR and actual guaranteed values. Will this be impacted? Because insurance expenses come down. So, if my rate comes down, but my expenses come down as well, say they come down an equal amount, then my actual performance won't change at all. The net values again. Let's have some fun here. So what we're gonna look at first is just this. So the topic of 2017 CSO, 4% guarantee, different insurance expenses. So we're gonna look at two different companies here. This is actually a 49-year-old female, regular preferred, company A and company B. We have a product that is designed in a similar manner, minimum 10% premium with both, MEC limit of $300,000, funding the product at $300,000 per year, and I used products with both of these companies in an effort to maximize the guaranteed values because they wanted to see that, I wanted to see it, so we showed it, in addition to several other options. But here's what we got, company A, 2017 CSO, guaranteed rate of 4%. Company B, exact same thing. Right off the bat, 300,000 goes in, 264. Over here, 300 goes in, 255. 15% hit compared to about a 12% hit. Not a huge difference right off the bat, relative to the amount that she's paying in. Now as time passes, let's look at Year five, guaranteed values here, breaking even year five. Same 4% over in this product, designed in the same manner. Guaranteed values, breaking even, 
year eight. You'll notice the same thing here. Death benefit drop after year seven. Different structure with the products, but still optimized in a similar manner to maximize cash value, deliberately trying to keep things as equal as possible. Now, we've got the annual internal rate of return, and then the average IRR. Quick refresher on that. Annual IRR isolates what I am earning year over year. For example, what did you earn in the S&P 500 last year? I earned 8%. 2019, I earned 30%. What did you earn in the S&P 500 over the past 30 years? Well, I averaged out 8%. Okay. Here's what I earned year by year. Average factors in all years. Okay. Now, this is a tax-free yield equivalent. It's a tax-free yield because we did not trigger a MAC, structured the policy properly, knows how to get the money out, all of that good stuff. So, annual IRR. Initially, this product is stronger. As time passes, the annual IRR almost evens out, actually. Let's actually do this. The annual, I want to get rid of in this example. Provide a little bit more transparency or just sim simplicity, I should say, since we got all these charts. So, here we go. Average IRR leaves the red <laughs> when it goes positive, when I break even. Same thing over here, okay. Net cash value difference. If I don't like the returns, if I just look at it and say, okay, like Steve, which one gives me more money? Like that's what I'm interested in. Here we go. Cash value difference. We see a difference there as time passes. With two different companies, and we deliberately showed two different companies with products structured in the same way. By the way, these two different companies, their non-guaranteed values, what they've actually done over time, almost always go back and forth with each other. <laughs> Hard to go wrong with either of them. Point, point here though is, based on the guarantees, why is one company so much stronger than another when we have a 4% guarantee on both of them? Like to the average consumer, an average financial professional or individual in the agent, an agent in the industry, they would say like 4% on both. They should be the same. Why are they so different? And the reason why is with the guarantees here, the other factor has to do with the insurance expenses. Guess who has a more favorable insurance expense? The one that has more cash value. <laughs> significantly as well. Let's look at age 70 here, 2.5 million, $217,000 more in guaranteed cash value compared to the option on the right. IRR 2.13 compared to 2.7. $300,000 per year going in. I mean, that's close to 250K. It's about 220 grand there in the difference. That's significant. So the main point here, however, is Going back to the guaranteed rate of 4%, this is a product today, not with the update, what change do we see? Well, no change in the product, but we see a difference in the values because of the internal insurance expenses. This is the item that no one talks about. It's always laser focused on the guaranteed rate. The expenses, that's another component, a major component that drives cash value performance over time. So this hopefully provides a little bit of transparency by isolating the net cash value over time. Now let's have some fun <clears throat> and look at an actual updated product. Let's look at the bank own life insurance product. So first we will look at the guarantees. So on the left, we have the old bank owned life insurance product. 45 year old male sample with a $100,000 deposit here. This is based off of the 2017 CSO tables. This is gonna provide a lot of insight here, will be extremely interesting. Clean, $100,000 deposit, Here's my cash value right off the bat. So this is a Boley product. Remember, Boley is different from what you and I as an individual can obtain. Death benefit, 380K. Example on the right, lower guarantee. So based off the tables, right, 2%, the guaranteed rate is not 2%. 
without going into info here, just because I can't quite yet, the actual guaranteed interest rate on this product is 50 basis points less than the old product. Guaranteed rate, 50 basis points less than the old product. So you hear that, you're a consumer, I say, hey, your guaranteed rate is going to be half a percent less than what the old product looks like. And this might not be 100,000. For a bank, it's probably gonna be 100 million, depending on the size of the bank and such. Now, all of a sudden, that's a huge difference. Now, with that said, this is where we never want to purchase a product, whether it's Boley or an individual product, based off of the rate, the advertised rate. The values, the net internal rate of return is the point of emphasis here, and the reason why. So we're looking at worst case scenarios here based off the guarantees. Old product, look at this one. New product, what's the difference? Right off the bat, <laughs> 47 bucks. Okay, in cash value, what's the difference in death benefit? Now that is significant, 177,000. And if this is 100 million, add a couple of zeros here. Right? Big difference all of a sudden. Now as time passes, so this is the guarantees here. Check this out. Old product. Stronger initially, but what happens as time passes? First off, there's not much of a difference on cash value specifically here. But look at this. So once we cross the age of 70, purely focused on the guarantees, chances are very, very likely I'm still alive at age 70. Average mortality is around 85. Look at this. Cash value. This is the new product on the right, just as emphasis here. So new product, what happens to our cash value? Gets stronger over time. This is a cash value difference. So what this is telling me is if I look at year 30, age 75, based off the guarantees with a rate 50 basis points, half a percent less than the old one, I've got 1344 more. Death benefit is still less. Eventually this catches up, but it's well past average mortality. So the death benefit this is a bully product still, is more favorable with the old product. Cash value, however, over time, gets stronger and stronger. And this is a 45-year-old male. Ages and insureds, gender does play a role. We've seen the new one come out significantly more favorable, guaranteed and non-guaranteed, with a case, case study we're working on right now. The number of insureds and who we're using does have an impact here. Point being, Lesser rate, stronger values. And this is an actual updated illustration, new mortality tables. This is the old one, apples to apples at the same time. Here we go. Let's look at the current crediting rates. So the difference here with the current rates is a quarter percent less with the new product compared to the old product. And what do you notice on cash value? more from start to finish. Death benefit, however, what's the difference there? $180,000 less immediately. So remember those MEC laws and that age 50, the 50 year old male sample with a whole life product where the same payment, or I should say the same death benefit obtains you more MEC space? We're kind of reverse engineering this here where you see the same payment, $100,000, just purchasing a policy, old product, old mortality tables, old guaranteed rate, purchase you, purchases one much more death benefit compared to what it does now. This is why the expenses are lower. So here we go. Imagine when we start to customize whole life policies here. What happens as time passes now? Age 70, old product, 200,000 in cash, 202, new product, 215. And again, this is 100,000. If it's 100 million, pump up the, the zeros here. <laughs> 12675. 
more money in my cash value. So should I be ultra concerned about the new products with the guaranteed rates coming down? Does that mean whole life will be inferior? No. Time will tell as we see the actual products come out, but just from conversations, from seeing Boley, which typically leads the pack, not expecting it at all because the insurance expenses are coming down as well. If I am in the market for a pure whole life product where I'm purchasing a death benefit, different story. Old one could definitely have a lot more value because I can obtain more bang for my buck with the same purchase. If I'm interested in maximum cash value and long-term cash value, long-term death benefit, all that good stuff, that's where the new one could actually be more favorable. Could be the same as well. Again, when we see the actual products released for whole life products, what you, you and I can obtain, we'll provide case studies so we can actually see it. But just like the mortality table update that occurred in 2020, late 2019 and early 2020, similar thing happened as far as, as far as it being this big change in the industry and really wasn't at the end of the day. I didn't see much of a difference. The guaranteed values were actually stronger compared to the old mortality table. So that's the kind of stuff I like to look at to see, okay, what is the true net impact? Will it hurt me? Will it help me? Age, will that have an impact? Yes, it absolutely will. But transparency here, this way I can make an educated decision to see, is it for me? Should I rush in now? By the way, we can rush in now. And then if we find out afterwards, man, I got into the old one, but the new one's better. Man, I should have waited. Remember, you likely will have the opportunity to update your old contract to comply with the new values if it is better. There's always a trade-off though. <laughs> Every time there's been a major change in the industry, there is always, always, always a trade-off. So good to be aware of that as well. A lot of information here. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive. I thoroughly enjoy them. If any items were not clear, or if you'd like me to go into more detail, or have questions, would like to see custom samples with any product options, feel free to reach out anytime. Um, call, text, email us. And as always, I hope this helps. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.